This video is brought to you by Squarespace. If you need a website or domain, check out squarespace.com. Hey everybody, and welcome to a new video. Do you love photography but hate your camera? Let's face it, enjoying photography is greatly improved by enjoying the gear that we use in doing it. In this video, I'm going to show you 10 problems we run into while using our cameras and show you the tricks to make these problems go away, making using them way more enjoyable. If you stay till the end, I'll show you the trick to make sure that this doesn't happen to you again. My name is Simon Dantremont and I'm a Canon ambassador as well as a professional nature and wildlife photographer living in Eastern Canada. I make weekly videos giving you photo tips or taking you behind the scenes for nature photography. Subscribe if you want to see more. Okay, let's get right into 10 things we don't like about our cameras and how to fix them. The first one is that every time we want to review our images in detail, we have to press two buttons. We do this to check if the focus was right or if the image was sharp. We have to hit the play button for image review and two, the magnifying glass to zoom into our image. But on many cameras, you can program image review and magnification onto one button. On my Canon cameras, I have it set to the set button, which after taking a photo isn't doing anything else. Second, do you find your camera's battery life isn't as good as you'd like and you're always changing batteries or worrying about your battery level? The problem is that we have many features that we can do without using battery power, even if we're not using them. Your LCD or your electronic viewfinder, if they stay on after you take a photo, are using power even if you're not looking into them. Reduce the amount of time they're left on. Better yet, turn on airplane mode on your camera and it will shut down your GPS, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, saving you tons of battery life. Have you come home only to find that you've overexposed your photos and blown out your highlights? Wouldn't it have been better to notice this in the field? I have a fix for that. Turn on highlight alerts, also known as blinkies, and they will show you by blinking on your photos if parts of them are overexposed. For those of you who shoot an auto ISO, you look down at your LCD and it just says auto. How the heck do you know how the photo will turn out and how noisy it might be if you only know what the ISO is after you've taken the photo? Easy, half press the shutter button and the ISO needed to take the shot will be displayed. Remember to do it while pointing at your environment, not the floor or your jacket. It's using the brightness information of wherever you're pointed. By the way, there are so many different brands and models that I'm not listing how to change these settings for every camera and every brand, as the video would go on forever. But if any of you want to volunteer this in the comments below on how you've set these up in your camera, feel free to share. None of us are as smart as all of us. Have you ever run out of memory and found your card full in the middle of the action? We only have ourselves to blame when this happens. Why? Because the camera tells us on the back LCD how many shots we have left with the available memory. Change your card before this gets to zero in case some action happens. What if you didn't bring an extra card? Fear not. Even if you shoot in RAW, many cameras will allow you to change to a format of RAW called compressed RAW, which takes up half the space. When the number of available picks gets low, switch to that and watch your shots available double, or even more, and there's hardly any image quality difference. I'd like to thank the sponsor of this video, Squarespace. I built my own website using Squarespace and it was a breeze. A website is just a great way to have a professional place online where you can show off your work, your service, or your personal brand. There are lots of useful templates, including ones for specific genres like photography, which is what I do. But the place to go now is to use the new design intelligence feature, combining Squarespace's experience and cutting edge AI, empowering you to tailor your build to your own specific needs. A website is also a great way to monetize your work by setting up an online store using Squarespace payments, which you can set up with just a few clicks and give your customers more ways to pay with Klarna, ACH Direct Debit, Apple Pay, Afterpay, or ClearPay. Go to squarespace.com to sign up for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com forward slash Simon for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Have you ever gone out to photograph for a day and come home only to find that you didn't have a card in the camera? Ouch, there's a fix for that. Set the camera so that it can't take photos without a card in the camera. On again, and that's release shutter without card. Thankfully, that won't happen again. 
Do you share your camera with other people in the household or share the same computer for editing photos and you end up with mixing up photos and not knowing who took what? You just want to be able to look at your photos, not everyone else's. Here's the fix. Use the naming feature in your camera to set up a profile that renames the image files in the way that you want. Add your name, which camera you used, or even which lens you're using. Then you know which photos are yours. Easy. By the way, follow me on Instagram and Facebook. I almost always give a photo tip with every post. Does your camera beep and make funny noises when you either hit the focus button or touch the back LCD screen? You can shut that off in the menus, especially that one that beeps when you focus. The folks at the music recital, wedding, or chess match don't need to know when you're in focus. Do you always seem to end up in a situation where you have the settings for fast action on your camera, but the action is static? or the settings for static targets and the fast action happens. Simple, use the custom settings on your camera if it has them. Set up C1 for static targets, C2 for fast action, and C3 for when you're on a tripod. When the scenario changes, just go to a different custom button. Do you come home with images that are just too noisy for your liking? These days, noise reduction software is great and can help with that, but getting it right in camera helps too. You can set a maximum ISO for your camera so that when it's adjusting your settings for you, it will stop when it gets to your maximum figure set. Great, and I promised you a bonus tip. And to this day, this still happens to me and I'm thinking there's something wrong with my camera. Even on my last trip to Africa, I'm looking at a leopard in the camera and thinking I'm not in focus. Duh, as I've done many times before, I've bumped the diopter setting on my back EVF, which is used to adjust the EVF to our unique vision. Same as on a pair of binoculars. If your image in the viewfinder is blurry, check to see if the settings and other information is also blurry. If it's your focus, the image will be blurry, but the settings and other information will be sharp. If they're both blurry, it's your diopter setting. If all this talk of camera settings has you wondering about what other settings you should definitely change on any new camera, see my video on that right here. If you found this video deserving, give it a like and YouTube will share it with even more photographers who just want to enjoy using their cameras more. And I hope that you can use these tips the next time you go out so you can come home with your own unique and amazing photos. I know you can do it.